Hi guys, it's me, Tori, and we're back again with another episode of The Blues Party! Oh my gosh, it has been forever. I literally haven't posted anything since the last game of the season. And honestly, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It honestly is simply because a lot of things that I wanted to do just didn't go to plan over the summer and yeah I've been so busy but we learn we learn like you guys know that like one day I'll be consistent but who cares we're back it's a new season so I've decided to do what we always do since this has been an audio only podcast I have always done this every single year so this year could not be different I'm going to give you guys my prep predictions. Okay, so this year is just me. I usually do it with someone, but I decided I'm just gonna try to give like rapid fire predictions because I also want to give you guys another video this week. Fingers crossed. I want this to be a little short and sweet, but because it's tradition, we can't skip it. So I have my notes on my phone. Um, we're going to just rate all the teams starting from 20 to champions, obviously. So yeah, let's get into it. With my bottom three, the relegation places, I honestly don't think that they are set in stone. Like either of them can be, you know, 20, 19, 18. But I think these three teams are for sure the ones getting relegated. At number 20, I have Ipswich Town. Like, I feel so bad saying this because I do really like McKenna and I really like the way he played in championship last year. But I do think anytime any team comes from the championship into Prem, you can't play the way you did in the championship in Prem. And McKenna is going to have to abandon all of his principles if he's going to be able to play well in Prem. And I don't know if I see him being able to do that. Moreover, I don't think that they've made any big signings of note really aside from Hutchkinson, which obviously that was my boy and I'm kind of sad to see him go. But he's not going to be a GA monster. So like with every relegation team, you need at least one player that's like going to really show up for you and you know do everything that you need them to do and i don't think Hutchkin is the kind of player that's going to do that and in general i don't think that their squad is good enough to compete in prep so they're number 20. 19th place i have southampton and it's for the simple reason of their squad is terrible i thought that their squad was terrible before they got relegated and they did and now they're back but i don't really see them doing anything of notes really while they're back really and no one really likes southampton anyway like they're not that good of an addition to prem so they can't go no offense southampton fans <laughs> in 18th this might be a hot take but i don't think it's that hot of a take i have forest nottingham forest um, with Forest, I think when they first came into Prem, they really wanted to do well. I remember like that first season, they spent like 150, almost 200 M. Their owner really like poured into the club. And also, I used to live in Nottingham. I went to uni there. I really saw what they were really trying to do with that squad. But unfortunately, there was like nothing came of it. I feel like they were really scattergun in their approach with their signings. And lo and behold, look at what has happened to them. They landed into PSR difficulty. They had a points deduction. Yeah, and that PSR difficulty from those choices that they made when they first came into prep has now made them not being able to sign anyone this summer. I haven't seen them sign anyone of note. I think that their squad is still not good enough even though they spent all that money their squad isn't good enough to compete in prem and i think the only thing that might possibly save them is the fact that the city ground is yeah the fans they are crazy so i think that's the only thing that could help them but i really do think that they're going to go down again and also there's rumors that they're going to get another points deduction so they're already going to start off on a bad note so definitely 18. okay moving on to number 17th and 16th you know people that are just about surviving and this one pains me to say but 17th i think is gonna be brentford you know i love brentford if you follow me on twitter you know i love brentford i've been to the community stadium so many times love that place but honestly i might be a little biased in saying that they might stay up because i know a lot of people think that they might be relegated this year but i think that they need cbs obviously and 
their squad is also just not as good as you'd want them to beat in prem but the difference between brentford and the rest of the other teams that are really being re i would say that are being relegated is that they have tony they have in boom they have people that actually you can actually turn to them and they will help you stay up presuming that tony stays then i would say that they'll stay up for sure so they're my 17th in 16th i have everton everton is kind of similar to brentford in the sense that i don't think that they have the best squad but everton also have a very seasoned premier league squad you know that they're, they're a team that have been in prem for a long time so i think that they might as well stay up also i can't see the goodison park in championship like <laughs> Even their fans, they'll be like, no. So I don't see that happening. So they also have Sean Dyche. And I really like Sean Dyche, even though he's a terrorist. But <laughs> I think that he will definitely hold the power to help them stay. Yeah, I think Everton will definitely stay up. And they also really played well last season. I think they would have been much higher if they than they were had they not gotten the point deduction. 15th, Leicester. I see Leicester as 15th because I think out of the three teams that are getting promoted, they are the best team, they're the best setup team to actually stay in Prem. This might be a bit of a rogue opinion, but I actually like Steve Cooper. I think that he's just been unlucky in his last job. So I'm hoping that he can prove everybody wrong with this job at Leicester. Yeah, I'm here for the Vardy redemption arc. I can't even cap. I know that he's old, but I think that he's still better than a lot of strikers in Prem and can still hold his own and i also think that the fact that they like similarly to everton and brentford they have a lot of players that have played in prem that experience is not something that you can buy anywhere so i think leicester will be able to stay up for sure and they'll be in 15th so yeah okay moving on to 14th i have fulham um fulham is a bit of a weird one because their squad is okay like they have some hitters there but I don't really see the squad competing for anything this year. Like, I like Smith, the Smith Rowe signing. Shout out Smith Rowe. I really like Smith Rowe. But I just don't see their squad or their team performing better than all of the teams that I have above them. So that's why for me, like, 14th is fine. 13th, we have Wolves. Wolves is a bit of a funny one because they did well last season, but they lost Pedro Neto to Chelsea. And that was obviously going to be, like, a big loss for them. But at the same time, I don't see them doing that much worse than last season. But I mean, like, they're going to do a bit worse but because they lost Pedro Neto. But you're just going to see the effects of Neto not being there. But I don't think that they're going to do better without Neto being there. So that's why I feel like 13th is pretty, like, safe for them, in my humble opinion. So just not better, not worse. Okay, so 12th, we have Bournemouth. And honestly, the only note I have for Bournemouth is... Guy, they sold Solanke, like, <laughs> that was their top hitter. No Solanke, no party. I think the rest of their squad is pretty good. Like, I don't think anything bad is going to happen to them. They play very well, they're very organized, so that's very good. But they're not going to be able to push into that top half, like, the way they did last year, without, you know, having a heavy hitter like Solanke. In 11th place, almost nearing the top half, I have Palace. Um, I think that... Palace is an interesting one because they've obviously lost Olise and for me losing Olise is a massive 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 loss but they still have Aze so that's not bad and the big thing for them this year is that they don't have Hodgson anymore so maybe they won't play like terrorists I feel like they for once they're actually going to play good football and they're going to actually try to you know push up and dominate teams more at least try to i think that 11th is a safe place for them i don't see them doing that much better than 11th because of the loss of what you say but they'll probably play better as a unit and then they can push up next season from there top half 10th i have brighton brighton are such an interesting team to me this year because i'm so interested to see what their coach does and how he translates his style into the premier league but I don't know that's why i have them right in the middle as 10 because i have no idea what to expect from them i didn't watch them much in preseason that season wasn't their best season ever but i just want to see what the new coach does and see what happens basically but their squad is obviously really really good so i don't see them being in the bottom half but who knows we'll see <laughs> in ninth i have aston villa 
um villa great squad great coach i love everything that's going on in birmingham for them but the main thing for me the reason why i have them in ninth is simply because they have champions league football we've seen it happen to west ham we've seen it happen to newcastle where teams that don't usually get europe get europe and then it pretty much just derails their entire season because they're not used to coping with playing that many games I see that happening with Villa too. Although I do think Villa have a squad that is good. I don't think that their squad has enough depth to compete in champs. I still compete in Prem. Like you can't have it all. So I think this season is going to be a step too far for them. And they're going to just come down back down to ninth and like chill there. But I do see them pushing up from ninth again next season in eighth i have west ham i know that that might also be an interesting thing to say since everybody thinks west ham are cooking up something diabolical right now but um i think that i agree with that sentiment like i think that they've had a great transfer window you know they've had full crew they've had some of them and that's all good but i think the big thing for them is the fact that they don't have moise anymore like they could actually potentially start to dominate teams which would be really interesting and they also don't have europe so that would be mean that they can you know they can focus more on prem and everything but i can't place them higher than eighth just because i need to see more from them before i can say that oh yeah this team is going to be top six i have them just missing out on europe but i think that's even lucky going to be good for them like miss out on europe build for the next season yeah in seventh conference league spot i have spurs <laughs> and you know me being a true chelsea fan i can never rate spurs highly i always do this every single year where i don't rate spurs but i think this year the main thing for me is that spurs do not have a strong defense i was saying this earlier to one of my friends like i think that this year it's going to be really 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 hard to keep clean sheets because every single team even the teams in the bottom like teams that are getting relegated they have decent attackers every single person has decent attackers so you having really strong cbs is going to matter a lot this year and i think out of like the big six spurs has the worst defense so i don't see them getting a top six finish because of that but at the same time they have solanke now like you know maybe they're just going to outscore their opponents every single time but i guess we'll have to see <laughs> sixth we have newcastle i think newcastle are obviously a really strong team um last season they had a lot of injuries and obviously that didn't help them that really derailed their season so i really think if they can stay healthy and just listen to eddie howe just build on their team they have a really good chance of making it to europe not even just making it to europe i think they even have a good chance at top four if they stay healthy but the big thing for them this year is that they don't have europe so they don't have all of the things that they had to contend with before yeah i think it's just going to be good for them to be honest number five uh, we have chelsea <laughs> oh my gosh even my blue nails <laughs> but i'm not gonna say too much about chelsea this is the blues barbie channel like we're all about chelsea here so i'm not gonna say too much about chelsea right now because i actually want to do an in-depth video on chelsea but what i will say for the meantime i like mariska i like him a lot i think Inkunku and lavia are going to be big game changers for us but i think the main thing is going to be are we going to be consistent the reason why i have us at fifth is majorly because i don't see us having a good start to the season i think we're going to have a slow start and then pick up from there so i think those points that we're going to miss out at the beginning are going to come and bite us in the ass later that's my thing but i'm gonna do a deep video on chelsea that's the next video i want to release actually so stay tuned for that and fourth i have united and the reason I have them as fourth is simply because I think United are a bit ahead of Chelsea in terms of their team development. I think they made the right choice in keeping Ten Hag because personally I really like Ten Hag. Sorry. Um, <laughs> they've made great signings. They've done really well to like actually improve the team. So I think it's going to be a case of just building on what they have and just really trying to take instructions from the manager. If they can do that and not leak crappy goals then they definitely will come forth in my opinion okay we're getting into the dicey stuff now and third i have liverpool 
I have Liverpool in third because I think they're looking great in preseason. Like they're the team that's done probably the best in preseason. So for now, I'll just have to keep them in third. Even though I do think it will be very interesting to see how they do without Klopp. So far, I'm liking what Sloss is doing. I'm liking his ideas and everything. So that's cool. But I've also just seen today that apparently they're not renewing VVD's contract. So I wonder how that's going to affect their performance but i would still keep liverpool ahead of united and chelsea so i think third is still a fair place to keep them okay one and two so for this part i'm going to go say number one first and then obviously by default you know who number two is i'm going to say why i have the winner winning over the runner-up and for me, unfortunately, unfortunately, guys, I see Arsenal winning this year. Like, this is just, I feel sick saying this. And I, it just, like, I can't believe this. And obviously, by consequence, I see Man City, rather, being second. With Arsenal, I think that they have a better starting eleven than City. I know that might be a hot take, but I think a lot of City players are passing their peak, a.k.a. KDB and a lot of them are injured a lot aka kdb and i also think that they have a better defense like i was saying earlier like the def having a strong defense this year is going to be really critical because everybody has a has very good attackers also probably have the best defenders in the league so by default as Mourinho said defense wins you titles so i have to put them as number one um Going back to City, everything I said about KDB, yeah, and I also really don't like Foden. I think that he's not as good as people say he is. So, <laughs> I only, the only reason why I still see them, obviously they're still going to compete because they just have the squad to compete. They obviously have Haaland and co and co and co. So, they're still going to compete, but I just see Arsenal, I see Arsenal just edging it in the end. So, yeah. Okay! Those are my rapid fire predictions. In terms of the other things I usually say, I'm actually like such as the first manager to get sacked and who I think would be the golden boy, blah, 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 blah. I will do all of those in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Next time I do one of these, I'm going to compare what I'm saying to what happened to what I said in the beginning of these. So I'm going to do this. At the end of the season, I'm actually going to come see if my predictions were right, if they were wrong. Hopefully they're right. I'm usually very, very wrong. So maybe this is the end. I'll finally be right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being patient. I saw some of you did ask for this video, so I had to make sure it was out. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, whatever you want to do. And see you in the next video, which will be this week. Keep your eyes. Bye.